Well, last week we were uh, dancing with the signs. There he is. Uh, this week I got a call about a sign recently placed in someone's front yard. A yard of the month sign. There's not enough Mondays on the calendar for me to do a story on every well manicured yard with one of these signs in it. I get that. And frankly, there's not enough room on this sign to give you the whole story about the good stuff I found growing alongside Miss Lucille's daylilies, pagonias, and angel trumpets. What do you think about having a television camera in your driveway? Well, I think that's pretty neat. The camera had only been turned on for a few seconds. We picked a warm day and a hot spot. You got a cooler spot? <laughs> when Miss Lucille's 99-year-old personality started wildly sprouting, like the limbs on her neighbor's shrubs. I might get unhappy and go over there and trim those bushes up a bit, but I don't do that too often. <laughs> I wait till he goes to work. Yeah, you can call it a little front yard OCD. Lucille's love of a good-looking front lawn probably has a lot more to do with history. How long have you lived here? We built in the early to mid-50s. One of the first houses built in the Anderson Island neighborhood back when this part of Shreveport felt far removed from downtown. We really felt a little bit isolated, but my sons loved it. Well, it is an island. Yeah. <laughs> That's when Lucille first brought a little bit of downtown to Anderson Island. Day lilies that came from downtown. She says those lilies came from the property of a home torn down back in the late 40s to make room for the old bus station to be built at Fannin and Marshall. But that blooming replant. Cacti. Tomatoes. Touch me not. Is just the tip of the thorny rose bush. Mosaios. Petunias. That's a pomegranate tree back there. Behind Miss Lucille's. Look where you're walking now. You stump your toe, you fall down. Anderson Island. Yard of history. A lot of people gave me flowers, so the flowers that I had I brought with me when I came here. This photo doesn't take us all the way back to this home's grand beginnings, but pretty darn close. A handful of years after moving into this brand new neighborhood, and as you can see here, Robert and Lucille Collins' yard certainly had yard of the month potential then. Those are just old candle lilies. But it makes a good background, don't you think? But it didn't hold a pepper or angel trumpet's chance to what's taking root now. There's my lilac there and lilac there that came from my mama. That's over 100 years old. When Miss Lucille and her husband moved to Shreveport back in the 50s, she clearly brought with her her mother Elizabeth's green thumb. The roses came from Ruston. That's where I grew up. Both green thumbs. My mama had a lot of flowers, and her yard got the yard of the whatever it was they had back in those days. Also in tow from Ruston to Shreveport, her father John sun up to sundown work ethic straight through this country's depression. She says back during the 20s and 30s, her daddy would get up before daylight and uh, plow behind mules or horses. Lucille's grandson, John, checks in on her weekly. See, I've been 39, 40, 60, 62 years. Ever since her husband of 62 years, Robert, passed away nearly two decades ago. See, this is day lilies. They're just not blooming now. Even though few would dispute she doesn't have life or this garden thing down to a pie pan science. Keeps the birds out, but the squirrels don't pay them any attention. 99 years old and still getting it done in the yard. Everyone's amazed. I'm amazed. <laughs> amazed at the things she's still able to do today. Did she tell you my granddad had a stroke? The things she did for her husband for two decades until Robert's death in 1998. She took care of him for 21 years and nobody else ever touched him. Multiple strokes beginning in 1977, leaving him partially debilitated. And I remember when I was little, I asked her one time, I said, can't you go with us this summer on the summer vacation? She said, no, I gotta take care of your granddaddy. Totally dedicated to the man she built a lifetime and this backyard with, which backs up to the beautiful bayou itself. But he helped me plan all this before we left here. Robert likely helped hoe the rows and plant the azaleas they brought over from their other Shreveport home. But Robert also helped grow the history of their amazing property, even while in the hospital. Somebody sent him a nice plant, and so they've just grown ever since they thrived. Some tropical plant, she calls it, that she planted along the bayou's edge way back when. See, there's some more of that tropical plant. In my a plant that in the many years after Robert lost his life, 
it's taken on a life of its own. And you'll see them all over the yard now, the way they're multiplied. They're pretty little plant. It kind of makes you think. Even two hands full of green thumbs couldn't have pulled this off alone. I just say, just look what the Lord has made for me. The Lord has made it for me. Did you know that? In hopes of making good on lost time and those family trips with Nana, John took his grandmother to Alaska. When she turned 97, Israel, and 98 years young, Yellowstone National Park. If given the chance, Miss Lucille would have driven the entire way herself. Yes, that's her driver's license, active and current with the state. It's pretty special being able to do that at her age. Why do you love it out here so much? I just try to take care of my little area. And pretty darn special to learn. She'll be after the Yard of September title as well. So they have a nice yard, very pretty. While keeping one eye on her yard and the other well, they cut the grass. On your bushy bushes, just so you know. <laughs> it's gonna piss mom. Right here. Boom, there you go. <laughs> well, you just delivering the punches, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. It's all love for Miss Lucille. Uh, speaking of that driver's license, oh, by the way, she beat cancer. Wow. And she demanded to drive herself to her own treatments. She said she didn't want to burden anyone. She won that great debate, her grandson tells me. Uh, Miss Lucille uh, learned how to manage life, we'll call it, to get through the tough times. Because way back when, her mother Elizabeth died from typhoid fever when she was only 10, uh, right in the heart of the Depression, 1929.